heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Lady Cheryl and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Now, I want to show you some footage of the beautiful tomato plants and pepper plants and zinnias, marigolds in my raised garden bed. And I worked very hard growing uh, this all from seeds, even the beans you see growing up, the trellis. You can work very hard with uh, your garden, whether you buy transplants or if you start everything, almost everything, by seeds like I do. You can work real hard, and then some little creatures can just come along and just destroy your garden. Now, for the last couple of episodes, I've been sharing with you how I catch slugs, uh, particularly after a rainy season, because that makes them multiply. And they love little moist, wet environments. So I've been telling you how to get rid of those. But today I'm going to talk to you about one insect, in particular the cabbage worm, that will devour your plants. And also, you can get rid of the cabbage worms, the slugs, and aphids, and a whole lot of host of uh, uh, insects. And if you neglect your tomato plants and your pepper plants in particular, of one main thing, they can look like they have been out in the sun too long, and they can look like they are sunburned, but what they actually are is suffering from blossom end rot. So, I want to show you how you can keep your plants looking healthy like this by preventing uh, nutritional deficiencies, as well as not letting insects eat them up. Okay, let's get started. I had to do a voiceover on the majority of this video today, simply because my neighbor is having some uh, work done on their home, and the machinery is just too loud. I can't hardly hear myself think. Wow, one day it's the wind, and now today it's uh, equipment. But anyway, I want to just share with you that you can grow your seeds and work real hard getting them uh, acclimated to the environment and transplanting them in the ground or raised beds or containers. Or you can go to the store and buy transplants and do the same thing. But if you neglect a few things about your plants, you can end up destroying or having them all destroyed. So today, I'm going to give you some pointers. The first thing I want to talk about is this. Make sure that you plant plenty of pollinating, attracting flowers, fruits or vegetables to your garden so that you don't have to ever worry about things being pollinated. Okay? And then plant some flowers or uh, herbs that will de uh, deter insects from coming to your garden eating everything. For example, I'm growing the marigolds because they deter a lot of insects. They have a very uh, pungent smell as well as the little purple flowers that you see sticking up. Those are society garlic. Insects don't like this. This Now, let me share something with you. I've had marigolds and had some insects to get by them and still nibble off of my plants. But I never have any insect damage anywhere close to where I have society garlic. And if you don't know, you cannot grow society garlic from a seed. You must start it from a uh, rooted uh, bulb. Okay, now I know somebody on eBay was selling some society garlic seeds, but they don't work. Trust me, I tried them. Yeah, I got hoodwinked. 
So anyway, um, so plant some things to bring pollinators, plant some uh, flowers and herbs to detract insects. Okay, now let's talk about the marigolds. The reason why I'm planting a lot of marigolds in these two garden beds is because I have a bad insect infestation in the soil. It's a microscopic insect that's called uh, bad nematodes that causes your plants to have knotted roots because of the fungus. And these bad nematodes don't like marigolds. In fact, marigolds will kill them. And I read all this and researched, researched this, but guys, I want you to know that it works because I had knotted roots in the garden bed where I have my tomatoes growing in my greenhouse. I grew marigolds for a solid year in that greenhouse. And this year, when I pulled the plants up, I no longer had any knotted roots. Now okay. I'm trying to get rid of these bad nematodes in the outside raised garden beds. And by the looks of how healthy my plants are, I think I've done the job. But I won't know until the fall of the year when I pull the plants up or before and I will see if they have any uh, knotty roots on them. Okay, so now let's move on. I want to talk about some pests. Today in particular, because I've been talking about slug, uh, slugs for the last couple of videos, and you know all about that now, because that's one that will eat your plant. It can devour a plant overnight, a lot of slugs. But now I want to talk about that ugly, icky-looking, slimy, oh, it looks gives me the creeps. But I can pick it up with my bare fingers because of the fact that I will do what I have to do to protect my babies. And you guys know that I think of my plants as my babies. Okay, so here we go. Let me show you that cabbage worm. So here's a cabbage worm that I picked off of one of my uh, plants this morning, kale. The moths come, they lay eggs, and they turn into cabbage worms, and then they start slowly chewing up your food, and they will get big very quick and do major damage. They will eat your plants up. They like to chew little holes in the middle of the uh, leaves and just keep eating around and around in certain little holes. I had to do a voice over again because somebody started a jackhammer. So, um... Let me, let me see if it stopped. And where you find one, there's going to be more. But it looks like it's just right in this area. So I'm looking down here, because here's, here's one. Let me show you. It's balling up. But it's right there, it's tiny. But that's a cabbage worm. So I'm just going to keep looking through here to see if I can find them. Now I can spray with neem oil. I can put diet tomatoes earth on them. But before I do any of that, I try to pick off as much as I can. And it's going to be uh, close to 100 degrees, I think 95 or something in a few days. So I don't want to put any neem oil and water on them. So I will use diet tomatoes earth. Sprinkle a little bit on the soil and see if I can get these little bad boys. Okay. For my new subscribers, this is food grade diet tomatoes earth. And it will kill a lot of insects. And it's not supposed to be very harmful to bees. Uh, but I say use it sparingly if you know you have a lot of bees in your area. Okay, everybody, here's a pearl from Cheryl. This is my almost three year old pepper plant. And you can see it looks like a, a small tree. Now this is what I want to share with you. You see this spot right here? 
That is Blossom in Rot. I'm gonna remove this pepper. Does that mean I can't eat it? No, it does not. I can cut this bad part out, chop the rest of it up and put it in a salad. But as soon as you see that, you know that you have neglected to regularly give this plant some calcium. And today I'm gonna to give it some organic garden lime. It's gonna take about half a cup out here. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it around. And when I water it in, it will take it up into the branches, into the stem, and it'll immediately stop that blossom in rot. Okay, but this is what that pepper looks like. And you can see right here, there are a lot of little peppers. Can you see them? On here. Let me turn the plant around and you really see them. I severely pruned this pepper a couple of months ago and there's no evidence of blossom in rot on these small uh, peppers, so they won't get it. They'll get some of this wine right away. And while I'm doing that, I might as well do this one too. I'm a little behind on my feeding of everything because of the emergency garden taking up a lot of my time. Okay, so now I'm gonna go get some water and water them in and they'll be straight. Okay. So I watered them very well. But I want you to know that you don't have to buy this product. If you would just crush up your eggshells and put a little vinegar in it. And what I do is I put my eggshells in the microwave for a minute and then I crush them up, pulverize them in my blender. I add a little vinegar to it and make it like a slurry. And then I feed it to my plants. Now, my fruiting plants, which will be like your tomatoes and your peppers, hot, sweet, or mild. But if you have evidence that you have blossom in rot, go ahead and use the lime because it'll take it up really quickly as opposed to the slurry that I told you about with the eggshells. It takes a little longer for that to get into the system of the, of the plant. Okay, I just thought I need to tell you that. I have bought calcium peels from the uh, drugstore, crushed them up and put them in water, made like a tea out of it, and that'll help. If you don't have one thing, use something else. That way you won't be losing a lot of peppers or tomatoes to blossom in rot. So now I know that I fed my peppers and my tomatoes the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and give some garden lime to all of my tomatoes over there and all of my peppers. Then I'll put it in my journal and date it. And a month later, I'll give them some more. Okay, it's kinda quiet now. And this is half of one of those planters. And uh, my daughter came and got all the lettuce, well, she didn't come and get it. She picked it up off my front porch. Y'all know I'm not letting nobody in my house. I'm high risk and I'm taking extra precautions about catching this virus. But anyway, I ordered these seeds a while back from Baker Creek. I wanted to try them because I don't, I can't eat white potatoes, I eat sweet potatoes, and I won't go into all of that, but these are supposed to taste similar to potatoes without all the starch. And they're called white hailstone radish. And you know, most radish only takes about 29, 35 days to, uh, from sowing the seeds to maturity. So, I thought it would be cool if I just put some of these radishes here. Now, I'm not going to do the traditional spacing and whatever. I'm just going to sow, drop a few seeds right here, sow these seeds, and then I'm going to sift some potting mix on top. 
and I'll show you how I do that. I'm just going to go in the house and get a um, stainless steel uh, mesh, drop some um, potty mix in it, and you can pretty much see the seeds. So I get a chance to disperse them the way I want them. We need you now. Lord, we need you now. We need you now, right now, right now. We need you now. Not another minute, nor another hour. Lord, the world needs you right now. Okay, that's going to be plenty. All right, now I'm going to go back in the house. And I'm, I'll be back. I'm going to show you how I'm going to sift this uh, soil. Just right in case, house. this one is a little too fine. We'll see. I can use this one. The only thing is, I don't want to have big uh, pieces of debris. So let's see. That's just what I thought. It'll work, but I'll be here all day. So, so I'm going to use this one. Because this potty mix has a lot of mulch in it, which is fine, but not for seed starting. So, I'll just shake it. See, what's, what's happening is I'm trying to watch what I'm doing at the same time. Another method is just to mix it in with uh, your uh, potting mix. Mix the seeds in right in with it. I'm taking these big pieces out. working it just takes a little time all of you all are staying encouraged do something like gardening that brings you peace as we go through this difficult time people all over the world are suffering they're dying they're concerned about their loved ones people in hospital rooms nursing homes are um, alone just pray for them and ask God to give you strength. My gardening mean is what keeps me calm. It keeps me relaxed. With the exception of seeing my son for just a few minutes the other day, that was the first time I had human contact other than picking up an order of food or going to the pharmacy in almost two months. Okay, think that's going to do it. If I see a seed like right here, I'm just going to push it in a little bit. Right there and right there. I'm trying to wear gloves, guys. I can't stand it. Okay, looks pretty good to me. What do you guys think? Yeah, I thought you were going to say that. It looks pretty good, Miss C. <laughs> okay, now I'm just going to very lightly water them in. Just real, real light. Just a little drizzle. 
because it rained the other day and the soil is still very moist. I just need to get the surface wet just a little. Okay, in 30 days, we should have some radishes and I will be bringing you an update. Okay, I better stop now while I'm ahead before I put too much water on it. <laughs> I mean, the birds are singing today. Hey guys, I don't know what this is. It popped up in one of my seed starting trays and I just decided to go ahead and grow it. I might have to do a voiceover because my neighbor is having something done. Uh, you can hear that generator going on over there, but you can see a bud right here. And of course these, if you know what this is, let me know. Oh, it's almost thick and strong like a tree. But I know it's not a tree. It's some type of flower, but it could be just a weed. A uh, different, unusual weed. Whatever it is, I'm going to plant it in this container right here. And you can see the roots have been growing from the bottom since I up-potted it. So I'm going to carefully try to take it out and put it in this pot. And I was able to get it out with all the uh, roots intact. I'm just going to break them up a, a little bit. Not actually break them, just try to unwind them a little. And I'm just doing this for fun. See what, what happens. I'm gonna make a little hole right here. Set it down, but not too low. Cover it up. Yeah, then we'll see what happens. And I'll water it in with some rain water. Okay, I'll let you see this plant in a few weeks. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. The end.